Many thanks for joining us on News Now on TV 360 Nigeria. I am Annette Felix. We begin with news that the Lagos State Police Command has arrested one Malik Onebiri, the suspected leader of a gang who killed a police surgeon in Lagos. The surgeon, Collins Isiabo, was shot and lynched by an angry mob last month. The police say Onebiri, alias Kobat Baron, was arrested in his hideout in Boko Benue State. He is accused of firing the shots that killed the officer at the Ogba area of Lagos. Baron's arrest follows the parade of 19 other suspects last week in connection to the crime. The police have however assured that all other suspects will be arrested. In Nasarawa, a gas explosion has locked the state capital, Lafia, killing two people and leaving 40 others seriously injured. The incident occurred at about 10 a.m. on Monday when workers were offloading gas onto a commercial gas plant, which suddenly exploded. People affected by the incident are currently hospitalized at Dalhatu Arab Specialist Hospital in Lafayette. Witnesses have recommended the efforts of the men of the fire service who responded to the site of the emergency at Monaco gas station. Lagos State Governor Akinwumi Ambadi has officially declared a, for, that he will run for a second term in office. The governor made the declaration at an elaborate ceremony in the southwestern state when he assured that he remains committed to achieving more in the state. The governor thanked his supporters and the All Progressives Congress party leaders for giving him a chance to lead the state, but noted that he can achieve more together. Ambade has now picked up his nomination and expression of interest form and will contest that the party's governorship primary scheduled for Wednesday, September 26th to Thursday, September 27th, 2018. The gubernatorial, election, the gubernatorial candidates of the Action Democratic Party in Lagos Babatsindi Badamosi has kicked against the rising debt profile of the state at both domestic and international markets. Badamosi noted that the infrastructure development of the state does not match the huge sums of money borrowed to construct them. The ADP candidate says if he, w if he eventually wins the governorship seat in the state, his priority will be to tackle the debt and assure that the state rises to its status as the African Economic Nerve Center. Three ways of creating jobs for the youth. One of them is to regenerate uh, in the immediate six local governments really quickly. That will involve a lot of construction work and a lot of artisanship. And of course, you know, it's young people that are going to be doing uh, a lot of these jobs. We're going to be building the coastal area. That's another slew of construction jobs that are going to go out to younger people. Now, in addition to that, we're also going to be leveraging on the uh, skills, the IT skills that our young people have gathered, that have been identified and acknowledged by the IT giants of this world. Mark Zuckerberg has been to Lagos, acknowledged that Lagos is an IT hub. Uh, uh, Google uh, recognized Lagos as a major IT hub. Now, we're going to be leveraging on that to set up, uh, to help with, to help a lot of youth do startups, IT startups, um, technology startups, not necessarily just IT, technology startups in general. We're going to be spending a lot of money in, in these areas to help young Nigerians start their own companies that will compete on the global stage. That's number one. Number two, we're going to help. It. We're going to be helping the entertainment industry massively. Okay, and the reason for that is it's not altogether altruistic. It's about enlightened self-interest, self-interest of the states. That is, um, if California is making as much as they are from from uh, entertainment tourism, then. What on earth are we doing with the third, with the world's third largest film industry, which is largely centered on Lagos? You know, we're going to be working with the entertainment industry to expand their capacity, to improve their output. Well, there isn't any talk of increasing the output. It's just improvement of the output. 
or, or the output of the entertainment industry that we're going to be working on, uh, with specific regard to the film industry. The, the music industry is more or less standing on its own legs, and that's mainly because they've managed to leverage on the various uh, platforms that are available out there on the internet, iTunes, Spotify, and the rest of them. Okay, we're going to be working with the music and the uh, movie industry to make sure that we, you know, we sell them to the world in, in the best possible lights that we can. Meanwhile, in the Alliance for Democracy, Owolabi Salis has emerged as the flag bearer of the party in the Lagos governorship election. Salis emerged by consensus through a voice vote at the party's primaries held in Lagos. He assured that he will improve the livelihood of all Lagos residents if elected as governor. Our plans are focused on the less privileged people, the people. And uh, when you're talking about plans now, you have to look at it sector by sector. You know, the uh, issue of education, the health, you know, the, the shelter, housing. You know, not just by bus stop or decoration. You know, okay, nice, you need to have a decorated Lagos. You know, not bad. But people are suffering. You know, empowerment of the people. Particularly their, their sustenance, family values. So we have a lot of plans. I don't want to reveal my plan right here. You know, uh, we have good plans too. But some of the, you know, that's some, you know, some of the plans that we have in the past, since 2006, some of them are being executed now. I'm not saying that they stole our plan, but ideas could cross mine. Uh, we have some projects that we're going to continue under this government. You know, like the Lagos Neighborhood Service Corps, uh, the last man, those are very nice ones, but we are going to upgrade them, you know, because we have that plan since 2006, you know, and uh, hopefully if we win, the whole of Lagos will enjoy what we're going to do. Meanwhile, one of the newly registered parties has been unveiling its manifesto for the 2019 general election. The Liberation Movement Party has pledged to ensure quality, equality among all Nigerians in the discharge of its affairs. They also pledged to ensure the adherence of the rule of law if elected into office. The first thing that Liberation Movement will be doing is to reconstruct the foundation of this nation by instituting or making people to espouse the right set of values which we'll talk about. And there are seven values that we have identified that have actually made nations great and prosperous. And one of those uh, virtues is equality. Today, the foundation of this country, our country, Nigeria, is built on inequality. And that's why you see that so many things are going wrong. Because when a nation is built on inequality, the first thing that happens is that you get your priority misplaced. The second thing, you discover that life becomes subservient. That's why we have insecurity all over the place. Life does not mean anything to anybody. The second virtue that liberation movement is going to be espousing is that of meritocracy. In Nigeria today, you see people just assess opportunity or giving position with, regardless of whether they have the capacity to perform in that uh, uh, position or not. And when you put somebody who is not qualified to head any position, then the result is not far-fetched. The result will only re result to what? failure. So liberation movement is coming to entrain that virtue of um, uh, meritocracy. Other virtues that we seek to espouse in this nation include integrity, incorruptible, diligence, excellence, and abeyance. 
still on the 2019 elections. The Not Too Young to Run movement has asked the ruling All Progressives Congress to reduce the cost of nomination forms for youths. The People's Democratic Party is charging 12 million naira for its presidential form, while the All Progressives Congress is demanding a open 45 million naira for its presidential form. Convener Sam Samson Itodo says the high cost of nomination fees has reduced the chances of youths to contest in the polls. A lot of young people are becoming victims of the autocratic and the undemocratic disposition of leadership of political parties across the country. Today, we've got young people who, inspired by the Not Too Young to Run movement, are unable to purchase forms because they are not products of stakeholder consensus primaries that are conducted before the actual party primaries. Today, a lot of young people who want to buy forms are either asked to get approval from state governors or approval from government houses before forms are being sold to them. And as a movement, we believe that this in itself is a huge challenge for our political process in addition to the high cost of nomination forms, which for us as a movement, we consider very, very exploitative. As a movement, we remain committed to promoting youth political inclusion, and we would not stop knocking on the doors of the political parties until they take intentional steps to promote youth candidacy and democratic primaries. Um, we are taking note of the commitments and um, the, the effort you'd make to improve and increase youth candidacy within your parties. We thank the young aspirants and we commend your efforts for one believing in Nigeria and even thinking that it is important for you to run. A political analyst has also been speaking on the high cost of nomination forms. Chike Oge believes the fees are too high and will encourage corruption. Oge, who was speaking on our flagship program, DG 360, also wants the courts to look into the matter. When you ask a man to pay so ex expensively for a form and he gets into office, what is the first thing he's going to do? Because most likely he's going to even borrow that money. He has to pay it back. Already we are opening up avenues for corruption. Okay, look at the situation. Apparently the, the president has come out to say, ah, 45 million, I don't have that money. Yeah, that money. And then they are saying Somebody. some a governor wants to pay for it. Some other people say it's a group. We don't even know. This is the beginning of corruption. Why should a sitting governor, if I if I made to understand what I heard or what I read, who has been unable to pay salaries for about 12 months or so, his state is in a total mess. Why should he now be happy to pay 45 million naira for the for the form for the for the president? If it's not that he's looking for some favor or, or the other. So these are all the kind of things that trip off the policy. So, the so, polity, if you ask so, me. Somebody going yes. to court, do you, do you think this is something that the court can actually deal with? That Definitely. The court can actually that, that's why courts are there for. The court's jurisdictions are, unlim are unlimited, especially in the high court. And, you know, like they said, there's always the inherent powers of the court where it can assume jurisdiction over any matter. The only thing is that you, you just don't want to show that it's a busybody that is coming there. So you have what we call in law the local standing, and then once that, the court will determine. And the good thing about, um, about the law is that it's always good to test it. You know the law is like a, a living thing, so you have to feed it to understand how it grows. It's organic. You have to keep feeding it. The, and the Director Engineering Hydrology, Nisa Clement in Nzehas, is calling for a proactive measure by government and its relevant agencies to relocate Nigerians living in floodplain areas to prevent portable disaster and loss of lives. Nze gave the warning at a press conference where he also noted that Nigeria is likely to witness a repeat of the 2012 flood disaster. He says the flood is most likely to affect states along the River Niger and River Benue axis. On his part, Director General of the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, Mustafa Mehaja, assured that a committee will be set up immediately to help come up with ways to contain the flood. On the River Niger axis, KB, Niger, Kwara, Kogi, Edo, Anambra, Rivers, Bayesa, and Delta states would experience a river flooding. If what is happening in at the upper catchments, 
the Upper Niger, the Inland Delta, the Middle Niger. If it is controlled from what we are, what we are receiving from uh, the dams continues, and also the release of water from the uh, Chiruru Dam, it will cause flooding. Then on the Vabenwe axis is Adamawa, Taraba, and Benue. That are likely to experience flood, even with or without the release of water from Lagos Dam. But if the intensity of rainfall upstream continues, these are the things that are expected. At the highest level, the height we expressed in 2012, occurred on the 20th of September, which is still about three weeks away. The highest flooding that occurred in Nigeria in 2012 occurred on the 20th of September, 2012. 29th, 29th. We still have more than three weeks or there about ahead of that particular time. And the height was 12.840 meters. As of today, it is a 10.01. We'll go on a short break now. I'm back with news in business. Do you stay with us? In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose center, which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those that are silly lies. And wait a do you know there's a way to find out if these things he's saying is true or not? Ah. This is the Construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amounts funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the go-to app. If you want to know how our commonwealth is being expanded by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by Other People Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, yeah. and it's true. <laughs> of course, I told you. You're yeah, welcome back. Now for our briefing in business is Esther Vese. Hello, Esther. Hi, Annette. So I hear that the case between the Central Bank of Nigeria and South African company MTN has taken a new dimension, in fact, a legal one. Please bring us up to date on that. It's actually, this is not a surprise. The South African telecommunications company MTN Nigeria has filed a suit against the Central Bank of Nigeria, CDN, and the Attorney General of the Federation to seek a restraining order. Now, the suit filed in Lagos on Monday is seeking an injunctive relief to protect its assets and shareholder rights. The company said it continues to categorically and unequivocally deny all charges related to investigations by the CBN and AGF into the company's CCIs and unpaid taxes. Now, we recall the Central Bank of Nigeria has alleged improper dividend repatriations by MTN Nigeria and requested that $8.1 billion be returned to the coffers of the banking regulator. In other news, the Federal Inland Revenue Service said it is ready to increase government's revenue through taxation by 20% before the end of the 2018 financial period. Now, as part of efforts to achieve this target, the FIRS says it has started introducing some initiatives, including instructing state tax revenue authorities to explore all non personal income tax sources. Chairman of the FIRS, Babatunde Fowler, has also warned that the service will soon go after bank accounts of the 14 taxpayers who are billionaires. Fowler explained that the FIRS had done a thorough analysis of all businesses, partnerships and corporate accounts that have a minimum turnover of 1 billion naira per annum for the past three years. Oil prices rose on Monday as U.S. drilling for new production stalled and as the market eyed tighter conditions once Washington's sanction against Iran's crude exports kick in from November. U.S. crude features were at $68.23 a barrel, while Brent crude features climbed $0.64 cents to $77.46 a barrel. The U.S. recount has stagnated since May after staging a recovery since 2016, which followed a steep slump in the previous year amid plummeting crude prices. 
Now outside the United States, new sanctions against Iran's crude exports from November, from November rather, were helping push up prices. Energy consultancy FGE says several major Iran customers like India, Japan and South Korea were already cutting back on Iran crude. Now let's take a look at Monday's trading session at the NSE. Corruption not in my country. Uh -huh. What do you want to buy? Small baskets. I want plantain. Eh. Uh, but why your plantain can't hard like this? Ah, why? madam, eh? Now the outside hard. Inside there, it is very soft. Quite, quite. <laughs> madam, wallahi, make her no buy. Make her show you something. What? What's in this one? Madam, this one, now the chemical where they put them for the plantain, make her ripe up. Eh? So you they put chemical for plantain where people go chop. No water, no be chemical. But that, no water. You know, say Pela, I don't talk and say water and no be enemy. Drink them. We are collect that water, drink them. Yeah, I just stop. Finish. See my belly. I from it don't big. I just stop drink water. Finish. Where I don't drink water. Where you drink water, man? Calm down. I they sell them plantain. I go come put them for chemical because I want to make a ripe go. Eh? That one I talk and now corruption. Corruption, not be for this a kaswa, come on, not be for this a country. Now me take up. Corruption not in my country. Stop corruption now. Monday, the equities market started the week's trading session with key market indicators standing at 34,848.45 basis point and closing the week's market on Friday. Key indicators stood at 34,037.91 basis point. That's dropping by 810.54 basis point. And that means greater part of the week was spent in the reds, the bears dominated. Now this week today, from 3,104 deals, a total of 1.5 1.356 million shares, 1.356 billion naira was generated from a total of 137.625 million shares traded. Now, hopes of ending the bearish trend and having the bulls regain dominance in the market has been shattered as we see it goes 40 down by 1.25%. Today's loss is largely attributed to the consumer goods sector as it records a 3.69% decline. You know, in fact, all sectors recorded declines, but the consumer goods recorded the highest decline. Now, leading the cream of losers, 21 of them, and dish in a hard punch, Nestle Nigeria declined by 145 naira. And this may be unconnected with the low purchasing power of consumers, which right now is caused by the high unemployment rates, and presently it stands at 18.8% in the country. Flowers of Nigeria, however, recorded the most gain with custodian honey flour and UPL, sorry, excuse me, custodian honey flour and UPL coming in leading our top four. We can see flour mills ended closing at 20 naira with a 0.5% 0 .5, 0 .5 uh, change in its share price. And you see custodian with a 1.85% increase, honey flour finished with a 5.65% increase, and UPL with a 4.17% increase. Now, to entice the did all the records, all everything recorded today from the gainers section was not really enough to push up or to entice the bulls back to the to gain dominance in the market. But being investors delight anyways, top traders for today's session is Diamond Bank, UBA, Guarantee Trust Bank, and Fidelity Bank. Now we're gonna take a quick look at the global stock market and see that they started the week actually on a positive note and that's compared to last week. You know, last week we had them on the reds most of the time. We can see from the London Stock Exchange with a 0.022% increase, Dow Jones, which is the American Stock Exchange, closed with 0.014% increase, and the Asian Stock Exchange, which is 0.30% increase in their market. Now, that's all we have on the stock market, Anetta. Thank you, Esther. And there's a very uh, important observation I made about today's business. I, I see that the all the all prices are rising today. I see that talking about the NSC, the, the bears have returned to the market and the bulls yes. have returned to the market on the global stock trade. And I would say for one that that is very interesting today. Yes, yes, actually, it is very interesting. Hopefully, the bulls did not return. Hopefully, they return tomorrow, actually. 
Indeed. Thank you so much for that, Esther. So we're going to a very short break now and return with stories on the international scene. Just stay with us. Corruption not in my country. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, madam. Uh, my name is Alera. I am not sick. I just need you to help put your stamp on this medical report. I, I want to tender it at my office as a sick leave. I'll pay 10,000 naira. Uh, Ma'am, that is impersonation. I'm not a doctor. Oga, okay. like say this English no copy. I go increase the money to 20,000 naira, eh? I beg. You know, eh? If I give you that 20,000, as you, as you wide, so, eh? You know, if it still help your condition more. So, <laughs> you know, say so you spread well. Uh, as, as I spread like virus, I mean. <laughs> Are you yeah. talking? <laughs> If first you come to the hospital, talk to make you give a fake medical report, make you go take cholesterol leave. Talk and say, no, not corruption, not in my country. Corruption, not in my country. Stop corruption now. Six people have been killed in an Al-Shabaab attack on a local government building in Somalia's capital, Mogadishu. The director of an ambulance service says 16 others were injured and also warned that the death toll may rise. There was no immediate claim to responsibility for Monday's attack, but Al-Qaeda-linked Al-Shabaab frequently carries out bombings and gun attacks in Mogadishu and other parts of Somalia. 19 people have been killed after a small passenger plane crashed into a lake as it tried to land in a thick fog in central Sudan. Only four people, including two children, survived the attack. The victims include the pilot and co-pilot, a staff member of the Red Cross and an Anglican bishop. The aircraft was carrying 23 people from the capital, Juba, to the city of Ural on Sunday. In football, Nigeria's coach Kenneth Raw has named 18 players for Tuesday's friendly match against Liberia in Monrovia. The list has 13 foreign-based players and five homeboys. Raw, who helps the Super Eagles beat Seychelles in their 2019 African Cup of Nations in Victoria on Saturday, picked Ayimba Trio, Ikechuku Ezenwa, Mfon Ndo and Sunday Adetunji. The match scheduled for Tuesday is to celebrate former World Footballer of the Year, Liberian President Jod Weir. Nigeria's Aruna Quadri and Egypt's Dina Meshef have emerged as singles champions at the 2018 ITTF African Championships concluded in Mauritius on Sunday, September 9, 2018. Quadri did not drop a point from the first round until the final when he defeated Egypt's Ahmed Salah 4-1 to win his first African Championships title, which he narrowly lost to Egypt's Omar Asa in 2016. Also, Meshef, who lost the title to Nigeria's Olufunke Oshinaiki in 2016, reclaimed her title after a convincing 4 0 win over compatriot Rim El Elk Akri in the women's single final. Lastly, former Set Etienne player Williams Gomez has died at the age of 19 after reportedly being shot with an AK-47. It is reported that a 14-year-old boy also died in the incident, with the police, with the police finding uh, the gun at the scene. Gomez left Set Etienne this summer after five years, having made 18 appearances for their reverse term in the fifth tier of French football last season. And that's all in our bulletin today on News Now. Thanks for watching. I am Annetta Felix. Mm -hmm.